Born to a black Jamaican father and a white British mother in Hackney, East London, sisters Melanie and Kimberly Appleby didn't have the easiest start in life. After their parents' divorce, the girl's mother was left to raise them on her own. Money was so tight that for a time, they even lived in a hostel. Music was always present in their home, and they regularly fantasized about becoming pop stars. Mel naturally gravitated to singing, while Kim had more of a passion for dance. When they were both done with school, they bounced around from one meaningless job to the next. Kim eventually found herself excelling as a five-thread overlocker in an underwear factory. It was even more important for her to succeed and become financially stable since she had a daughter to take care of after becoming a mom at 17. Mel, on the other hand, really struggled to hold down a full-time job. One day, Mel's mother suggested she try her hand as a glamour model. She had no interest whatsoever and was so reluctant that her mother finally decided to take a photo of Mel and send it in to a local newspaper herself. Almost overnight, Mel would achieve major success as a topless and nude model. Even though things were going very well for Mel, she still longed to make her childhood ambition to be a singer come true. Her modeling career would actually give her the opportunity to mix and mingle with a lot of entertainment industry people. Eventually, she would meet the man that would start her on the path, music manager and ex-member of Scottish pop rock band Marmalade, Alan Whitehead. He loved her charisma and star quality so much that he put her in his new club act, the Glamour Girl Roadshow. The experience solidified Mel's determination to leave the modeling world and launch her music career. However, also at this time, she was experiencing some serious health issues. She'd been diagnosed with cancer of the liver. After undergoing surgery, she officially walked away from modeling for good. While out at a club one night, Mel would start chatting with a man who turned out to be a record producer. He ended up getting her into the studio to record. After initially laying down a few demo tracks, he jokingly asked Mel if there were any more like her at home, since he originally wanted to put together a two-girl group anyway. Of course, Mel took the opportunity to rave about her older sister, Kim. Kimmel, the name they originally went by, went back into the studio to record more tracks as a duo. They sent it off to independent label Supreme Records and waited. And waited and waited. Tired of waiting, the ladies marched themselves down to their office and put on an impromptu song and dance show on the spot. They were signed immediately. Their Chicago house music influence debut single, Showing Out, Get Fresh at the Weekend, dropped in September 1986. It reached number three on the British charts that year. It was a minor hit in the U.S., peaking at number 78 on the Hot 100, but it exploded on the dance chart, climbing all the way to number one. Everyone was loving the hats, as their fans lovingly called them. They were stunningly beautiful, and their distinctive chic high fashion plus trendy urban streetwear style turned everyone's head. Of course, Mel's cheeky pics from her modeling days did come back to haunt her. Or so the magazine publication that released them thought. Mel wasn't the least bit worried about it and laughed it off. Their follow-up single would blast the girl's fame and success to new heights. Respectable skyrocketed to the number one position on the UK singles chart, as well as several other countries, including the US dance chart, becoming their overall biggest career hit. Their debut album, titled FLM, was released in April 1987. The true meaning was f***ing lovely, mate, a regular expression the ladies and studio staff would say in response to a good vocal tag. Naturally, they had to come up with something more acceptable to say in interviews and on stage, so they came up with fun, love, and money. The album, as well as their hit songs, were written and produced by British songwriting and recording producing trio, Scott, Aiken, and Waterman. They've also produced for many other mega successful British acts, such as Bananarama, Dead or Alive, and Rick Astley. 
During the promotion of their third single and the title track, the back pain that Mel had been experiencing for some time had worsened after a bad fall in a restaurant in Switzerland. So much so that they had to cancel several work commitments. The press would also begin to speculate on what was really going on with her when upon their return from Japan, Mel was being pushed by Kim in a wheelchair through the airport. Even the world tour they had planned would eventually be canceled while Mel prepared herself for her second battle with cancer at just 20 years old. Tess had revealed another growth on her spine. The duo disappeared from the public while she began treatment. The story that was fed to the public was that the fall that Mel had resulted in a slit disc, which had crushed some vertebrae in her spine, and she would need time to recover and therefore be unable to continue promoting the single and album. Plans for the music video also had to be drastically changed by using old footage from a previous performance. The burden to carry on, unsurprisingly, fell on Kim who was under a lot of pressure from the record label to fulfill their contractual agreements. She, along with her family, also had to deal with the press writing dramatic and hurtful stories about Mel and what they believed was happening to her. Through it all, Mel continued to keep her spirits high and both her and Kim still spent hours talking about their comeback and plans for a second album. She even signed herself out of the hospital at one point when she felt up to it to return to the studio to record. Also at this time, their fourth single and fourth top 10 hit, That's The Way It Is, would be released. However, Mel and Kim, as well as their family, wouldn't be able to properly enjoy the moment. The press was not letting up on their quest to find out why Mel was hiding from the public. Ultimately, an ex-boyfriend of Kim's blew the whistle by selling private photos of an unrecognizable Mel to a tabloid publication. Kim was livid, but Mel took it all in stride. She even expressed later that it was actually a relief to have everything out in the open. It now seemed pointless continuing to stay behind closed doors, so Mel, along with Kim, began making occasional public appearances, beginning with a press conference just days before the publication of the photos. At each appearance, Mel looked better and better and spent the whole time smiling, laughing, and assuring everyone she would make a full recovery. Whether we have the career again, it's just not important. Well, we will have the career but, again. Well, yeah, we yeah. will. I mean, I mean, we're working towards you're it. You're just lying about that. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, she's the lead on that. But, um, <laughs> the fact that Mel's getting better is just great. That's enough. Yeah. That's enough. Sadly, after developing pneumonia from a simple cold, Mel's weakened immune system was unable to fight off infection. She died on January 18, 1990. She was 23 years old. After her sister's passing, Kim launched a solo career, with much of her debut solo album composed of songs co-written with Mel, meant for their second album. The album, titled Kim Appleby, contained her debut solo single, Don't Worry, which reached number two on the UK charts in November 1990. A follow-up single called GLAD, or Good Lovin' and Devotion, also made it into the top 10. A second album was released in limited capacity three years later, titled Breakaway. None of the singles released made any significant mark on the charts. Then, Kim disappeared from the music scene for over two decades. In a 2017 interview with Classic Pop magazine, she explained what happened. After Mel passed away, I made the first solo album in her honor. I put so much energy into it and wanted to showcase some of the songs we'd been writing during her illness. By the time of Breakaway, I wasn't enjoying it anymore or happy with the way the music was going. I wanted to take a rest and collect my thoughts. I was on a personal quest to show the world the legacy she had left behind and didn't really take any time out to grieve. I found it quite lonely especially on the road traveling without Melanie. I missed my home life and decided I didn't want to be in the limelight. Even though she stayed out of the pop star spotlight, Kim continued to express herself with creative outlets such as songwriting for other recording artists, acting, and having her own online radio show. Today, more years have passed since Mel's death than years she was alive, but her memory and work continue to be celebrated. 
In 2010, a deluxe double disc edition of their one and only album, FLM, was released. Kim returned to performing live in 2017. The following year, she also co-presented a BBC Four three-part television series called Smashing Hits, the 80s pop map of Britain and Ireland. The show explored the distinct sounds that came out of different parts of Britain and Ireland in one of pop's golden decades that Kim definitely knows a lot about. Mel and Kim fans got a very special treat in February 2018 when the never heard before demo track called Where Is Love was released. It was actually the duo's fans who crowdfunded to get the song to the masses. The Mel and Kim legacy was further solidified in October 2019 when the Mel and Kim singles box set was released. The ultimate seven CD collection features 76 remastered tracks and many rare and unreleased mixes. Launched in 2013 and completely redesigned in 2020, melandkim.com has become a comprehensive archive to the sisters' amazing accomplishments and achievements within the entertainment industry. It's a beautiful tribute and one-stop shop for fans to get their fill of all things Mel and Kim. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time.